afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Weller of the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, also known as CVAC. And Clearing the Air covers air pollution issues in the San Joaquin Valley and brings you interviews with individuals who are at the forefront of air pollution policy, advocacy, and research. And our show airs every fourth Friday at 3 p.m. and is hosted by CVAC. And the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition is basically a partnership of more than 70 member organizations throughout the valley and state unified in their commitment to create clean air for all valley residents, uh, which is, you know, a serious need for us. And today we're talking about a recently uh, published study in the uh, journal Nature, which claims air pollution is killing 3.3 million people a year worldwide. And... uh, the, the interesting thing about this study is that it claims farming plays a larger role than, than has been estimated in those uh, air pollution related deaths. And so uh, the study was developed by scientists in Germany, uh, Saudi Arabia, Harvard University as well. And today we're, we're talking to the lead author, Dr. Jos Lillevild, director of the Max Planck Institute of Germany. In, of for chemistry in Germany. Uh, Dr. Lillefield, thank you so much for joining our show. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to it. Great. And so just to give a little background of um, your experience, besides serving as the uh, Max Planck Institute uh, director, um, he's also a professor of atmospheric physics at the University of Mainz, Germany, uh, has a Ph.D. in atmospheric physics, and um, he ha- his work has been fundamental for the understanding of chemical and transport mechanisms that regulate the composition of the atmosphere Um, and he has co-authored hundreds of uh, peer-reviewed publications Uh, he's the associated editor editor of several journal journals a member of international committees and has received international distinctions so let's get into the study what are some of the major uh, findings of this study Dr. Lillyfield well, what we do is we link uh, premature mortality to different emission source categories of atmospheric pollutants. Now, overall, we find that outdoor air pollution is mostly by uh, fine particulate matter and to some extent also by ozone, that they claim 3.3 million premature deaths per year worldwide. And um, the estimate of the magnitude of this premature mortality by air pollution is actually consistent with the values that are given in, in uh, recent assessments like the global burden of disease. Mm-hmm. What we did is we make the distinction between different source categories. Okay. And uh, I, uh, the results that we have obtained is uh, by combining a computer model of global air quality and we combine that with population and health statistics and what we call an exposure response function that connects air pollution with health impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, the model that is being used and tested and uh, improved also by use of satellite measurements and also being compared to measurement data in the United States and in Europe. And this exposure response function that has to, was needed to be updated in, in comparison to past work because we wanted to do a global survey and most of the studies have been done in the past in Europe and the United States, but especially in Asia, the, the concentrations of particulates and other pollutants can be very high, much higher than that, what we are familiar with. Mm-hmm. And therefore we needed to account for these very high air pollutant concentrations. So I think that is what is new in this work, and especially also the uh, the attribution of air pollution-related mortality to different source categories. Great, and you mentioned that fine particulate matter is was more of a, a focus of, of this study. Um, can you talk about how you, you approached both types of uh, pollution, ozone versus uh, particulate matter? Yes, well... What we do is we account for emissions, so we we take uh, account of emission inventories that are being made, and these are quite reliable for the United States and for for uh, for Europe. And these are being introduced in a in a model that uh, that 
simulates the weather or climate. These are the processes that that distribute air pollutants throughout the air over continents and, and actually globally. And, uh, and some of these pollutants are also chemically active, so they're being converted into other pollutants. And for example, this is how ozone is being formed in the atmosphere. Uh, nitrogen oxide emitted by traffic are being exposed to sunlight and other pollutants, and the combination then creates ozone and fine particulate matter. And this is what is being uh, introduced into these models. And our model accounts for these processes so that we can calculate the concentrations of these pollutants at ground level uh, to which people are being exposed. Mm -hmm. And I've talked here on the show about, um, you know, the the differences between particulate matter and ozone and and when we experience those. And for our valley um, here in the San Joaquin Valley of California, we have a very serious um, particulate matter problem, and that's our typically our winter time pollution. And uh, we've talked about some of the, you know, the health effects of of particulate matter. Do you want to get into um, what are some of the, the health impacts that you um, looked at as in the in the study? Yes, we make a distinction between five disease categories, mm-hmm. and this, they can be. Um, categories include what we call cerebrovascular and heart ischemic heart disease and these lead to strokes and heart attacks. So the premature mortality is caused by strokes and heart attacks and these account for nearly 75% of the air pollution related mortality and somewhat less than 25% is related to what we call respiratory disease and lung cancer. So these are the diseases that are being accounted for that are being influenced by air pollutants. So a certain fraction of the people that uh, that are affected by uh, strokes and heart attacks is being caused by air pollution. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are also other other, uh, causes with a certain fraction, and this is being calculated based on epidemiological studies, a certain fraction can be attributed to air pollution. And this is what we used to connect with the concentrations that are being uh, calculated for surface level as being inhaled by people all over the world. Right. And and so the, the, I think that's also something that, that's different about this study is that you have some of the the actual percentages of, of the diseases or causes of death that, that um, are, are uh, distinguished as to how they're, they're, they're linked to air pollution. And, yeah. and uh, here locally, um, we have, uh, you know, a lot of conservative politics. And I've, I've heard, uh, in particular, uh, an elected official here say that they're not going to be concerned about air pollution until they see on a death certificate cause of death air pollution and so how do you how do you respond to that how do you link air pollution uh, to these deaths I know that you mentioned there are other factors but I'm guessing it's very complicated but you talked about some of the um, the studies that are involved in order to link the deaths to air pollution can you go into a little more detail yes I think the, the, the remark that we need to see this on a death certificate is uh, not entirely fair because, you know, when somebody uh, dies from a stroke, uh, it does not say on a death certificate why this person uh, was affected by a stroke. Of course, there can be a number of reasons, like uh, like uh, high, high blood pressure or, or, or nutrition factors, and there are a number of them. And, but what is being done in epidemiological, what they call cohort studies, is they have actually uh, monitored many hundred thousands of people over the years, uh, over the decades, I should say, in the United States as well as in Europe, and now recently also in China. And these people have been monitored, and their diseases, the, the, the occurrences of diseases and the, the causes of death have been, uh, have been linked to environmental and uh, factors as well as uh, certain uh, habits that these people have or certain uh, diseases that they that they might carry so this is based on a on a a really enormous amount of statistics so these are statistical relationships but since the number that is so that is going into this statistic is so large that the, the, the results of these statistical analyses are really very reliable so it is quite well known what fraction of 
these diseases is being caused by certain uh, factors, including air pollution. Right. Thank you for explaining that. And, you know, something that also um, seemed different about this study with other um, air pollution uh, studies related to, to deaths in, uh, caused by air pollution um, were some of the projections, long-term projections that, that were made. Could you talk about those? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, what we have done is we have assumed is what we call a business as usual scenario. Mm-hmm. And business as usual more or less is a, a worst case scenario where we assume that only the currently implemented legislation will be valid for the next decade. And of course, this is to some degree not realistic because we would hope that especially in Asia where the situation is really grave, that new legislation will be implemented and will reduce air pollution. But it's more like a warning. If you do nothing, then this will happen. And this is what we have done. We have said, okay, we implement a business as usual scenario. And if you do that, we find that the number of people, which is currently 3.3 million per year, could double by the year 2050. And that, of course, is a, is a warning uh, more than a scenario of, of, it's not a prediction. It's a warning, please do something, because else uh, the situation will get really bad. Great, and that, that definitely hits home here for us as well. We were just uh, working on passing some very important um, legislation, uh, climate package here in California that, uh, you know, made the same case that that if we did nothing um we would we would see uh, um, some negative health out- outcomes and so this this really adds to it on on a global global level of course and and we've you know in the work that we do in in the our radio show here we've we've talked about a lot of research um that that correlates uh deaths to to air pollution how does this how does the data um differ are are the numbers different as let's say for example a world health organization um estimates estimates of of air pollution related deaths what are the the big distinctions with the the, the data on the, the number of deaths? Well, actually, the method that we are use, using is quite close to the method that's also used by what is called the global burden of disease. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so this is a, an activity where many uh, sources or, or many causes of death are being uh, considered. And uh, for example, to give an example, HIV, AIDS, or malaria, or other infectious diseases. And so we... We stuck, stuck to that method because we did not want to produce a new, um, a new number in terms of the number of people that is affected. What we really wanted to do is to show, okay, this is the number, but we can tell you to what degree different sources are actually causing this problem. Because if you make a measurement of a particle, to give you an example, it will give you the composition of a particle, but the composition can be actually affected by several sources. So, for example, power generation and traffic, to a large degree, cause very similar particulates. And therefore, if you just only measure the particle, you cannot tell whether it comes from power generation or from traffic. And this is what you can do with the type of model that we have used. So it's more like the attribution to different source categories that we think is very helpful also for policymakers and legislators in order to tackle the, the, the main causes rather than, uh, than you know, failing on, 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 on instinct. Uh, I mean, people generally assume that traffic is the bad guy, which is to some degree true, but there are also a number of other uh, sources that need to be tackled. And uh, this is what we have tried to do. Right, and and that that leads uh, into what really caught my eye with with this study is that it looked uh, very closely at um, emissions from agriculture, and uh, as I've shared with you, uh, you know our valley here uh, in the San Joaquin Valley of California, we are um, you know kind of we're sort of referred to as the breadbasket of America, the backbone of our economy is agriculture, and uh, we have you know mega agriculture on on a larger scale here while four million residents live here 
in a valley where our air pollution gets trapped um, you know with depending on the the uh, the weather with our uh, you know, inversion layers and the winter and uh, extreme heat in the summer and so it's it's really a bad bad recipe um, for for our health but uh, talk to us about how what you looked at in terms of agricultural emissions for the study. Yes, well, one of the remarkable results is that, for example, in the United States, one of the main causes of particulates is actually, actually uh, agriculture. It is almost as large as power generation, and we think that it is a larger source of particulates than traffic. And the reason is the following, is that when you apply fertilizers on the land, and also animal husbandry is an important source, then a gas called ammonia is being set free into the atmosphere. And this ammonia, this can react with other uh, compounds and form particulates. So for example, if you have nitrogen oxides coming out of traffic, these nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere are being converted to products that then react with ammonia to form particles. And if you do not have ammonia, these particles would not form. So for that reason, the, 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 the contribution of the ammonia from the agriculture is a very important factor in the formation of these particles. And for that reason, in the United States, we find that nearly 30% of all particulates are related to agricultural emissions. And obviously, this fraction will be larger in areas where agriculture is, is important and they will be uh, smaller where, where this is not the case. So the agricultural emissions appear to be quite important. Right, and, and to give you and our listeners some perspective, um, you know, since our uh, coalition has been formed uh, in 2003, I think that's the area where we've tried to um, create clean air policies um, that address emissions from agriculture here in the valley and it hasn't always been successful in some of the original uh, per, you know uh, efforts that we made when we first start started we're still working on because of the obviously some of the the politics that that happen here that are occurring here in the valley and um, as I said that you know this is these are large-scale agricultural um, agricultural industries here in the valley um, with an enormous amount of power um, and so uh, it's always a challenge and I was wondering if if you had um, addressed any of the uh, regulations or you know and on a kind of national perspective as to why these these emissions have been um, you know at this at this level and and um, un, unregulated yeah well, this is one of the problems, is that it is unregulated. Mm -hmm. Because um, in the past, um, air pollution legislation has very much focused on urban air pollution. And urban air pollution is often associated with traffic. Now, one of the things that we find that even in the urban environment, much of the particulates that are occurring uh, within the city boundaries are actually related to emissions that take place out of the city. And of course, some of the particles that are being formed from traffic are transported to the countryside and, uh, and, and have a, a, a vice versa, have an influence on the air quality. But what has not been really properly looked at, I mean, people automatically assume that power generation, industry, traffic are, are the, the bad emitters. But the fact is, is that in the past decades, much has been done to reduce the emissions from these technologies and that not a lot has been done to reduce the emissions from agriculture. Perhaps because people had not expected that this plays an important role in the reduction of air quality. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And and here, I mean, every region is different as well. And, and here in the Valley, our challenge is that um, any, you know, introduction of re regulations is seen as, um, uh, you know, hurting the economy here in the valley, and, and we've made the the case many times that um, you know the health, the negative health health outcomes of pollution also contribute to um, you know a, a, an economy that um, is weakened uh, due to you know um, emergency room visits, missed days of uh, work and school, etc. 
And so um, this definitely um, is relevant to, to our valley here and, and what we're, we're facing. And so we really appreciate you looking into, into this and, and something that, that we will hold on to. Um, how are you um, looking to either present this um, research or influence any policy? Are you taking this anywhere? Well, first of all, we are trying to explain to people what what the causes are of air pollution. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I'm not now talking about uh, the San Joaquin Valley, but in China or in actually in cities in Europe, where uh, severe problems with air pollution have occurred, people have um, have tackled traffic, and it, it had no impact. And it is not only bad that it, that that that, uh, that the air quality wasn't improved. But if you're implementing, if you're implementing measures that have no effect, then people and the public in general, but also uh, people that develop cars or whatever, uh, generally the interest in trying to contribute to air pollution control will be fading because it isn't helpful anyway. So it is very important that you establish what are the critical factors that contribute to air pollution and go after them first. And uh, this, I think, has not been done uh, too, uh, properly in the past. I think this needs to improve. And this is our message, is that we really want to, for different countries worldwide, want to emphasize which countries should pay most attention to which category of air pollution. Mm-hmm. And I think that will be helpful in trying to clean up uh, our atmosphere. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lillyfield, for joining us. Um, if you want to read the uh, study, you can find it at the Nature Journal online. Um, and uh, we can also post that on our, our website and Facebook page, which we can uh, give you at the end of the show. So thank you very much for joining us. You're most welcome. Thank you. All right. And for our listeners, I uh, want to remind you that KFCF, KFCF is a listener-supported station. That means 100% of our support comes from our listeners. Your support keeps KFCF on the air. No government grants or corporate underwriting. So we... Um, you know, we we talk about how how unique this station is here in the valley, and um, this this station um, has allowed CVAC to have this uh, radio program here for I want to say at least oh maybe six years or more, and so I think that's very probably closer to eight or nine I would guess okay. because it was already in existence when I began here as manager in two thousand and eight. So okay, wow. So it's it's dated back um, quite some time, and I know some former directors of. Of, of our organization, Kevin and staff, yeah. Kevin Hall, uh, Jenny Sacklar was program staff for CVAC a couple years ago. Um, we've all been able to to keep the show going, and and it's extremely important, as all of you know. It's it's a, you know, we have a public health crisis here in the valley, um, you know, with our air pollution, and so it's really important to have this this voice somewhere here in, in the valley, and so um, KFCF is really making that possible for us and and making sure that you have all of the the correct information. You get, unfortunately, a lot of misinformation from our air district, and and, uh, it's important for you to... To, to remain connected to to the what's true and um, in order to protect your your health and all of the other programming that that exists here at KFCF. So if you um, you know really value the this program and um, and all of the, the the unique shows that that are on this station, please uh, give a call and, and make a pledge to one eight hundred. Four three nine five seven three two, or you could go to www.kfcf.org. And it's really important to support KFCF. You know, as Dolores said, we don't receive uh, government grants, we don't receive uh, corporate money, and so we need your help. We need your support. KFCF has been here for forty years. We went on the air in 1975. This is our fortieth anniversary. And KFCF has been a valuable voice, bringing you perspectives you don't, often don't hear in the mainstream media. In fact, some of them are virtually non-existent in the mainstream media. And you know, air pollution is definitely one of the issues here in the Valley. You know, we also have people on talking about water issues, farming issues, labor issues, and all these things here that you hear on the station. And it's important 
to be able to continue to hear that type of thing, you know, we have uh, Vic Bedoyan, who reports from here in the Valley for the Pacifica Evening News, doing stories about uh, everything from the rough fire to the Delta water to, you know, uh, labor and immigration rights and other things that are happening here. 1-800-439-5732. You can also send a check to us at KFCF, Box 436. Four Fresno 93744. That's box 4364, Fresno 93744. Or call right now 1 800 439 5732. Great. Thank you. And before we say goodbye, I I just wanted to um, update our listeners on a few things that are going on here locally um, at our Air District. Um, Unfortunately, our Air District has been lobbying to uh, weaken the Clean Air Act. And if you haven't seen it in the papers, um, the Air Board members, which are made up of uh, local elected throughout the Valley, um, they have signed on to some opinion editorials that you um, will be seeing in in your local paper and uh, basically saying that the Clean Air Act is is bad for for the Valley and it's bad for for business and so they they are trying to gain support Um, and so I I want to warn you that um, the the proposal itself first of all did not follow through a a, a, um, transparent public process and uh, the proposal actually um, is a threat to our our health and not only were the two um, health voices on the air board opposed to it um, but CVAC and also the American Lung Association urged the air district to reject the proposal but um, even with that opposition they have moved forward and and they um, plan to to maintain this as part of their their legislative platform in um, you know their their effort to um, not um, receive any sanctions they're not they're not really concerned about um, cleaning the air necessarily it's more about um, making things a little easier for them to meet um, certain air quality standards um, and, and trying to make those changes within the Clean Air Act and whether or not this will be successful is is will you know is yet to be seen because it's you know obviously a long-term effort but it's again another example of the air district um, looking for loopholes and and scapegoats um, as to why they can't, um, you know, clean up the air here in the Valley. And so we want them to focus on upholding the Clean Air Act um, and and seeing what can be done here in the Valley as opposed to constantly looking um, outwards and and blaming others. And so um, that's something to stay close to. And uh, we have a couple of uh, meetings coming up at the Air District. You stay close to our Facebook page. Um, to be informed of those. And our next show will be on the 23rd of October at 3 p.m. You've been listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF 88.1 FM.